Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members. I wasn't going to say much, but I want to clarify a few things. If you read the amendment, it's very clear that it allows single occupancy facility, including a multiple occupancy facility, only if the use is when no other persons are present. This does not create an unfunded mandate on schools. If someone got confused and thought that we were trying to use handicapped children as an excuse, I apologize, but you are wrong. That is not what is happening yesterday. It's not what is happening today. This is intended to be respectful and fair and protective for safety for each and every student in our public schools. I move passage. Members. Mr. Simmons, for a purpose. I'll go back to have my questions answered on the amendment by Mr. Patty. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Do you, are you, do you want to answer questions? I'll be glad to answer any questions. Is Mr. Patty available, or would you rather do it? It doesn't matter to I'm me. I'm the whatever. author of the bill. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Well, thank you for taking my questions, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, and I believe this was said multiple times yesterday. I wanted to make sure that essentially what we're doing is we're, we are continuing kind of a policy that we've had in this state and our schools for a long time and that, you know, boys and girls, you know, use their restrooms, locker rooms, shower facilities. And if there's a situation that makes that uncomfortable for someone, that the school will accommodate that person in a discreet and professional manner. Is that correct? It could be. Could, it could be correct? Yes, it could be. What situation would not make it correct? Well, if you read the amendment, it says that the board of trustees of a district of governing body of an open enrollment or uh, public school shall ensure that each school or school facility accommodates the right of each student to access restrooms, locker rooms, and changing facilities with privacy, dignity, and safety. Right. So it ensures that they do that, Mr. Simmons. Um, and that, and that, that, was my, that was my question, that if, right? some, if someone has a <clears throat> challenge that they're uncomfortable that the school would be required to accommodate them in a manner like you just read. Yes. Correct? Okay. And then, uh, thank you. And then uh, if, a school fails, if a school fails to do that, is it your understanding of the amendment, Mr. Chairman, that the Attorney General has the ability under the amendment, and I'm not a lawyer, uh, to enforce that through uh, injunctive relief if they do, do section, not? Section B says this section may, infor may be enforced only through an action instituted by the Attorney General for mandamus or injunctive relief. At the request of a school district or open enrollment charter school, the Attorney General shall defend the district or the school in an action challenging this section under the Constitution or laws of the United States or under the Constitution of this state. Right, I understand. I read the deal. That was my, my deal was not to read it. My deal was, as I think that covers two issues. One of, them, does. One of them is if a school does not, <clears throat> one of them is if a school does not follow the policy. And the other one is if the school gets sued for a reason and then the attorney general will defend them. But That's correct. So you believe the first sentence, I think like I do, is where if the school doesn't follow this policy that the attorney general does have some provisions to enforce the, what this bill says. Is that, that correct? That is correct. It's okay. very clear in the amendment. Okay. Um, let's see here. I think that's it. Thank you. I move passage.